السلام عليكم جميعا الحقيقه طبعا يعني انا اول مره اشارك في السيريس بتاعه الكونجنتال هارد ديزيز ليكشرز وفي الاول احب يعني اشكر اسوان هارد سنتر في الاول وفي الاخر انه هو يعني المكان اللي احنا اتعلمنا فيه وعالجنا فيه عيانين وتعلمنا من العيانين و يعني ادانا الفرصه ان احنا كمان نبتدي ندبلوي او نترانسفير العلم ده على قد ما احنا عرفنا ل ناس في كل حته واحب اشكر طبعا بالاساس حيتم حسني ودكتوره سهى رميح لان هم من اكثر الناس الحريصين على ان السيريس دي تبقى مستمره وتبقى يعني ماشيه بالنجاح ده طيب توداي وي ار توكينج اباوت clinical presentation of echo diagnosis of TGA uh, after the يعني following the other lectures uh, I think this lecture will be just uh, reviewing the things that already uh, explained in the other uh, lectures or uh, may I add some uh, tips or tricks during management or uh, diagnosis uh, uh, back to the introduction TGA is the most common uh, cyanotic congenital heart disease uh, presenting in neonates It accounts for around uh, five to seven percent of all congenital heart disease, uh, and it uh, uh, it uh, occurs in two, 20 to 30 percent of 100,000 uh, live births. Uh, there is a male predominance; uh, it uh, reaches almost three to one in some uh, papers. Uh, and these uh, uh, these patients and this uh, a disease, uh, why we are. Uh, stressing uh, or focusing on discussing the, the issues related to because without treatment these patients uh, usually uh, do not survive uh, uh, 30% of them uh, within the first week or uh, uh, and uh, 70% by the first months uh, will die without uh, management or uh, surgery uh, and uh, in, uh, in the old Uh, studies about the natural history it reaches around 90% by one year of age uh, will uh, not survive without treatment. Uh, so uh, the pathophysiology is uh, uh, based on uh, in, in TGA in, in, the, in the, cir the normal circulation usually runs in sequence. So the blood goes with deoxygenated uh, blood from the uh, systemic veins to the right side then to the pulmonary artery to the lung and then get oxygenated and uh, back to the left side, uh, then to the systemic circulation. Uh, uh, while in the TGA, the, the main uh, issue is the parallel uh, circulation, that the deoxygenated blood is coming from the systemic veins, going to the systemic circulation, and the oxygenated blood coming from the lung, back to the lung again, and if we don't have intracardiac shunts or enough uh, mixing sites inside the heart or extra, Uh, cardiac, uh, so this uh, patient will not survive. Uh, the intracardiac shunts uh, usually occur at the atrial level, which is the uh, most uh, important uh, level of uh, mixing, uh, uh, also in the VSD and the BDA. Uh, so uh, this is the, 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 no the usual arrangement of the uh, normal heart. Uh, and this is the arrangement in the cases of the uh, transposition of great arches, and this is the better regulation Uh, and uh, the, the barrel circulation. Uh, uh, this abnormality usually occurs uh, uh, embryologically due to uh, abnormalities in the development of the conus, uh, subpulmonic conus, which is a, a usual development in the normal hearts that we have the uh, muscular conus anteriorly and to the left, uh, the subpulmonic conus, and the uh, migration of the pulmonary valve during development from posterior to anterior. So if we have uh, absorption of the subpulmonic conus and the resistance of the subaortic conus, this is uh, one of the most uh, accepted theories in uh, developing this abnormal uh, relation. Uh, if we came to the, uh, the classification of the transposition of great arches, and uh, today we are talking about the Uh, TGA, uh, a simple TGA, or the complete transposition of great arch, so are not, uh, uh, I mean, relating to the patient with congenitally corrected transpositions or, uh, or the LTGA. So we are only focusing on transposition of great arches 
uh, which can be classified into four groups. Uh, the first group was a small intracardiac uh, shunt, small VSD, uh, or we can call it TGA intact ventricular septum, or if you have a small VSD or small uh, uh, intracardiac shunt, so these patients are, uh, although they have intact ventricular symptoms, they have high pulmonary blood flow due to the uh, original pathology, which is the parallel circulation. And the second group is the uh, TGA uh, VSD, uh, and the VSD uh, association with TGA is uh, one of the common uh, findings. It, it accounts for around 40% of the cases. Uh, and this also a TGA was increased by more blood flow and intracardiac, large intracardiac shunt. The third group uh, are TGA VSD with uh, left ventricular outflow tract obstruction. Uh, we usually do not uh, say it TGA, uh, people are said in TGA VSD PS, but when we call it left ventricular outflow tract obstruction, this may be uh, more accurate because uh, this, the, the level and the, of the obstruction at the left ventricular outflow tract may be valvular, subvalvular, supravalvular, and this uh, can uh, uh, have impact in uh, managing this patient and the strategy of treatment. Uh, the, the fourth group, uh, this RTGA with uh, uh, pulmonary vascular obstructive disease, or TGA with pulmonary hypertension, uh, and this TGA with uh, VSD, they have restricted blood pulmonary blood flow, but this is due to uh, increased lung resistance or vascular, uh, vascular resistance in the lung. Uh, and this group also, uh, there are some uh, entities that can we, we can face it in the uh, neonates. The, the patient presenting with intact septum and the resistant pulmonary hypertension of newborn, they also have the similar uh, presentation like this uh, group. Uh, so the clinical presentation of the first group, which is the TGA with intact ventricular septum, or we have a small intracardiac shunt. This patient usually uh, presented early with prominent cyanosis, uh, early after birth, uh, and sometimes they have mild cyanosis if the BDE is still large for a time. Uh, and if you uh, use the pulse oximetry screening uh, for these uh, neonates, you can find the reversed cyanosis, so you can find the saturation in the lower limbs are higher than the upper limbs uh, in some cases. Uh, there is a statement from the American Academy of Pediatrics and the American Heart Association about the importance of the pulse oximetry screening in detecting an uh, early detection of the cyanotic congenital heart disease, not only the TGA, but all the cyanotic congenital heart disease because we know that the transitional uh, fetal circulation and the presence of the BDA, and sometimes it is large for one or two days after. So uh, we can, uh, this patient can be missed uh, during uh, the early, uh, uh, early uh, period post, uh, postnatal. So they recommend uh, to have a pulse oximetry check after 24 hours of delivery, even if you discharge uh, the baby, they can came next day and have pulse oximetry check, and this can uh, help in detection of the uh, uh, cyanotic congenital heart disease. The second group, most probably they uh, miss the early presentation with cyanosis because of the large shunt, so they have uh, high pulmonary blood flow, and the large shunt, so they have also uh, some mixing. So these cases most probably uh, presents uh, later on, maybe at two to six weeks when the pulmonary vascular resistance start to drop. So they present later with uh, symptoms and signs of uh, congestive heart failure uh, with cyanosis. Uh, and they have prominent tachypnea, tachycardia, and difficult feeding, and you can find the x-rays uh, pelithoric and uh, congested. Uh, uh, and also, uh, they may have mild cyanosis. It can be evident with a stress or crying or uh, during feeding. Uh, the third group, they have prominent cyanosis. It depends on the degree of the left ventricular outflow tract obstruction, and the most uh, and the murmur mostly are harsh uh, at, at this uh, group. And uh, the X-ray usually are oligemic. They, uh, this group, are a variable group. They sometimes present early uh, if they have poor mixing and no intracardiac shunt uh, enough to, uh, to have uh, mixing. If they have moderate stenosis, but there is no intracardiac mixing, they can present early. If they have good uh, mixing, uh, but they have progressive 
uh, left ventricular outflow tract obstruction. They can present like hello early with a good saturation and then at age of six weeks to six months with progressive cyanosis. So uh, these groups are variable in uh, the presentation. Uh, the fourth group, these patients are uh, present with prominent cyanosis, and I say after even balloon atrial septostomy or septostomy, they can continue to have cyanosis. We have seen uh, a lot of patients having uh, large BD on prostaglandins and they don't get a good saturation. So we go do uh, uh, balloon atrial septostomy, and we found that these patients continue to have desaturation. So this is uh, most probably because of the elevated pulmonary vascular resistance and pulmonary hypertension uh, doesn't increase with age. So uh, these patients should be managed with the pulmonary vas dilators rather than only relying on the uh, mixing thing or opening the, the BD. So uh, is there any guidelines um, uh, commenting on the TGA? I mean, uh, for this is a guidelines uh, came out from the uh, uh, the Urban Society of uh, Urban Association of Cardiothoracic Surgery and the Association of the European of Pediatric and Congenital uh, uh, Cardiology. Uh, and these guidelines in 2017 uh, was only uh, talking about the TGA with intact ventricular septum. Uh, they, they are commenting from the prenatal assessment, from the natal, postnatal assessment, and the uh, clinical management and the follow up for the patient and the surgical strategies also. Uh, what I get from these guidelines, uh, and because this disease came early after birth, so uh, these patients are critical uh, immediately after uh, birth, and we need, if we can improve the prenatal diagnosis of these cases, this will help uh, the, the management uh, postnatally to be planned or prepared. Uh, so they, from the, the recommendation for the prenatal detection, uh, they recommend while the obstetric screening during the 18 to 22 uh, weeks, uh, they, should, they shouldn't only rely on the four chamber view and the screening to say that this is heart is normal uh, and, and they should go for the outflow view. And uh, we have the characteristic of the outflow view of having the aorta coming from the RV and the pulmonary coming from the LV. And this is parallel relation is usually not present in, in other uh, disease or the normal heart. So this is the recommendation uh, and, uh, to do prenatal screening uh, early in pregnancy and uh, also uh, regarding the views, they recommend to have the outflow view in, uh, in this screening. Uh, their uh, recommendation for the perinatal management, uh, if you suspected a case of TGA, so they should be uh, delivered at a hospital, either near to a tertiary cardiac uh, center that can manage these cases uh, or uh, in a place that equipped with uh, a team that can uh, receive the patient on uh, mechanical ventilation, they can put the prostaglandins, they can uh, uh, do balloon atrial septostomy. So they have recommendation also for the prenatal management. Uh, and the postnatal recommendation, also they, uh, uh, I mean, uh, class 1C that the neonatal pulse oximetry screening is crucial for timely diagnosis of TGA, again. Uh, uh, and they recommend that the echocardiography is the modality for choice. Uh, other things that the performance of pulmonary atrial septostomy should be considered under echocardiographic uh, guidance uh, at the time of the delivery. So, uh, so now we, we talked about the clinical uh, presentations of the TGA, and we can uh, uh, highlight the echo diagnosis of the TGA. Uh, we just get one view from the subcostal view uh, with, uh, with the on-fast view and going to the outflow tracts so we can appreciate the parallel relations. We can see the, uh, the pulmonary coming from the uh, LV and the sees aorta coming from the RV and uh, have to know the uh, it is pulmonary or aorta. If you can trace each of the great vessels, the aorta is a straight vessels going up, giving the head vessels and the pulmonary is uh, a, a bit short vessel giving the bifurcates early than the aorta, and also if you can uh, track the coronary uh, origin from the uh, aorta. So the initi initial diagnosis is made through assessment of the ventricular arterial discordance, uh, because in, in the cases of the TGA, we have uh, most of the cases are the, 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 the diagnosis is the situs solitus, the AV concordance, and the VA discordance. 
So the only abnormality is the ventricular arterial discordance, where the aorta originate from the RV and the pulmonary originate from the LV. And uh, what we stress uh, on uh, in this lecture that uh, do not stop at this uh, part of assessment and don't get distracted by having the ventricular arterial dis discordance and uh, so it's TGA and that's it. So usually uh, continue your uh, segmental analysis and uh, assess all segments of the heart. Uh, so this again, uh, the same view with uh, color interrogation, color double interrogation. We can see uh, uh, the RV is dilated and the, the reversed uh, curvature of the uh, septum that's in the normal hearts should be the LV that uh, uh, have the, conca the concavity towards the RV. Uh, also, uh, for people who are uh, familiar with the Barstern long axis view, you can also assess the parallel relationship of the grid vessels. So you can see the, uh, the pulmonary mitral continuity and uh, the aorta coming from the RV uh, with the subaortic cones. So if you uh, initially diagnosed uh, the TGA, uh, now we come to the relation of the grid vessels, which is a, a cornerstone of this uh, diagnosis. Uh, so uh, this has some implication in the surgical uh, management. Uh, is it the usual oblique relations with the aorta anterior to the right, to the pulmonary, or uh, is it the anteroposterior relation? Uh, and uh, uh, in some cases, the side by side or the even the aorta can be slightly posterior in rare cases. Uh, <coughs> uh, so, and, and this uh, arrangement, uh, these sinuses of the aorta, it, it is named uh, with different uh, nomenclature than the usual uh, left and right coronary cusps or sinuses. So uh, they are uh, the two sinuses facing the pulmonary is called the septal sinuses or the facing sinuses. Uh, uh, and the one most anterior is the non-facing uh, sinuses. And in this orientation also, uh, when you have uh, aligned commissures uh, like this way, like this way, and in the side by side, the facing sinuses become anterior and posterior rather than uh, anterior to the right, anterior to the left and uh, posterior to the right. Uh, and in the anteroposterior relation, you have the sinuses are uh, right and left. Uh, there is a lot of different uh, uh, ways to uh, nominate these sinuses, uh, um, uh, whether from the surgical point of view or from the diagnosis point of view or the echo diagnosis point of view. But the, uh, the, the most important thing is the, uh, to be a common language between the uh, cardiologist and the surgeon. Uh, to identify uh, what's the right sinus, what's the left sinus, and uh, the, each coronary is coming from which uh, sinus. Um, a lot of classification also uh, uh, describing the coronary abnormalities, and uh, uh, the coronary abnormalities are common in the TGA uh, because, as we mentioned, that the, the, the migration of the, the subaortic conus and the aortic valve anteriorly, this disturbs the uh, relation of the coronaries. Uh, so each coronary usually uh, join the nearest uh, sinus. So he, uh, here we have that the, in the type A, that the left facing sinus, uh, giving the left anterior descending out and the circumflex, and uh, the right uh, posterior sinus giving the uh, right uh, coronary arch. Uh, in our uh, center, Swan Heart Center, uh, after, uh, named after uh, Professor Magdi Aou, so we use the coronary classification, of Yaqub classification. Uh, although it's not covering all the, uh, the, the I mean the abnormalities, but most of the abnormalities are set in these five uh, classifications. And I will give some, some examples by ECHO to identify uh, the types of uh, TGA. In TGA also, the usual coronary type or the, the, the type A, this is represents around 78% of the cases, uh, followed by uh, type D, uh, uh, where the circumflex joined the right coronary artery and the uh, LED coming only from the left sides. Uh, so if you do a parasternal short axis view, uh, high parasternal short axis view, and uh, checking the relation of the uh, uh, great uh, vessels or the valves. So at, at this view, we can identify that the right coronary artery is coming from the right posterior and the left 
coronary artery starts uh, its origin from the uh, left coronary sinus. So this we call it type A. Uh, I meant that single coronary is type B. I know that type B is different in uh, our classification, but it can include the, the, the single uh, uh, coronary anatomy. Uh, so here we can see that from the left sinus, we have a large uh, coronary that bifurcates, and then it gives anteriorly uh, a large uh, anterior branch that goes to the right side. So this is a single left coronary artery that gives the RCE anterior to the uh, aorta. Uh, type C, it is almost similar to the uh, usual type, but the, uh, the coronary uh, comes near to the uh, commissure between the two facing sinuses. So uh, left system is coming from the left sinus, uh, right coronary coming from the right posterior sinus, but both coming very near to the uh, commissure. Uh, and type E, uh, here we can see that the, uh, the LED is coming from here and the RCA gives uh, another branch runs anterior to the, uh, to the out. Uh, the importance of, of type C and, uh, and uh, that when you coming very posterior from the uh, closing to the commission, we have an incidence that the, the left system or the right system can have an intramural part uh, at this uh, diagnosis. So that's have some importance uh, to, to at least uh, be expecting this uh, anomaly uh, during uh, surgery, so not to injure the coronary artery during the translocation of the coronary arteries. So now what we can get else from the echo diagnosis for the TGA, uh, we can check the LV mass, the LV size and the function. And here we get the term of conditioning and versus the deconditioned the LV. What happened in neonates that uh, pre uh, natally, uh, this LV is facing a systemic pressure because uh, the lung is uh, not opening and the pulmonary artery pressure is so high and the BDA is reflecting the systemic pressure to both ventricles. Uh, so this ventricle is trained on systemic pressure uh, during intrafetal uh, life. Uh, after uh, delivery, you start counting down the, uh, from the start, of, from the time of the delivery, that we all know that 70% uh, of the uh, pulmonary vascular resistance or 80% of the pulmonary vascular resistance drop uh, through the first week of life, and the remaining 20% of the pulmonary vascular resistance continue to drop over the next six to eight weeks. Uh, we have some exception that some, some babies have uh, elevated pulmonary vascular resistance for some time, uh, but what uh, all know that, or, or all people uh, uh, usually uh, uh, seeing the neonates within the first three weeks of life, they are still trained or just uh, trained, so they accept to do a primary arterial switch operation in the uh, any neonates presenting uh, before the first three weeks of life. Uh, or some people extend this time to the first uh, month. Uh, but after the first month, we all know that this uh, ventricle is not facing the pressure for a long time. So when you get a patient uh, presented late, uh, whether neglected or uh, lately diagnosed due to uh, uh, other issue, so you have factors to be assessed by the echo to check if this ventricle is still prepared or not. Uh, these factors, we all know that these factors are uh, exteriorized from uh, a study on a small number of patients, but uh, there is like a, a worldwide acceptance or most of the centers accepted this criteria and even in the textbooks, they mentioned the same uh, 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 parameters to detect in these patients. So these factors, uh, including the indexed LV mass uh, to be more than 35 gram per meter square, uh, the left ventricular posterior thickness in diastole is more than 3.5 millimeter, and the size of the ASD, uh, the interventricular septal geometry, and presence of left ventricular outflow tract obstruction or BDA, and the LV estimated systolic pressure uh, if accessible through and uh, directly from the mitral regurgitation as we do in the in the in the tricuspid uh, to estimate the pulmonary pressure. So these uh, all things uh, should be checked by echo to try to find. Or to, to, to figure if this patient is still prepared or not prepared. 
uh, this is uh, an example of two cases. Uh, this uh, a neonate where a small atrial uh, septal defect, uh, whether post Rushkind or uh, natively present, uh, and this coming early with a, a good left ventricular posterior mat, although we have the septal curvature start to be uh, midway between the LV and the RV, and still uh, slightly pushing towards the uh, LV. While in the uh, right side uh, echo, we can see a lately uh, presented uh, patient with TGA, we can find that the septum, uh, what, what we call it the banana shaped left ventricle, so we have seen that the, the left ventricular lateral wall and posterior wall becoming very thin and the septum uh, pushing towards the uh, LV side and sometimes we can find like a dynamic LV tube structure uh, in the lately presented cases. Uh, also we can try to check this in uh, different views. So uh, on the left side, this is a prepared ventricle with an early uh, presenting or have other uh, things that can uh, help the LV to maintain its, uh, its mass. Uh, and this, uh, the short axis view of the other case that's uh, coming late with uh, squashed LV and uh, a very thin uh, out left ventricular posterior wall. Uh, this is another example of uh, uh, parasternal long axis view that shows uh, one case with uh, it was also it is early presenting uh, but uh, and the LV looks banana shaped but still the posterior, posterior ventricular uh, wall thickness is still uh, adequate uh, uh, also uh, the size of the left ventricle uh, because uh, some cases when the ASD is a slightly uh, sm uh, small it, uh, it helps the LV to stay uh, conditioned, and if you have a very large atrial septal uh, uh, defect or uh, a very large uh, post uh, atrial septostomy uh, defect, so this can, uh, I mean, uh, deload the LV. Uh, and uh, although this ventricle shows a good volume, but the thickness is uh, thinned out and uh, is not conditioned. So a lot of factors. Uh, to consider if the LV is conditioned or not, so you should look um, uh, some data from the clinical data, like the age. Uh, uh, if you're discussing a patient uh, coming uh, t 12 days, 10 days, and has uh, borderline LV, so from the factor of the age, we still uh, see this patient is conditioned and can go for primary tear switch. And when you get a late patient uh, from 21 days to, you know, some people call it from four to six weeks, uh, you can start consider these factors either to uh, uh, to go for a primary arterial switch if you have enough evidence that this uh, LV is prepared or uh, to see the other options. Uh, as we know, this is the just the echo views to see if the the, the PFO is restricted or the large uh, ASD uh, whether natively or post uh, atracetostomy. And also uh, look for the BDA, uh, not only for the mixing, but also if you have a large BDA that will help the LV to still facing a high pressure and uh, continue to be trained for a longer time. Uh, this is an example for TGA VSD, and uh, in most cases uh, VSD, we can call it uh, a perimembranous VSD, uh, uh, or I mean, I, I will not call it subpulmonic now because there is an entity of subpulmonic VSD. But with cases of VSD, you also look for the uh, LVOT. So you can see on the, the right side uh, video that there is mild cone and deviation uh, with the VSD, although uh, it looks not obstructed uh, at this time. But when you, uh, you consider this while repairing the VSD, because this may be obstructive later on. Uh, also, uh, uh, we include the double outlet right ventricle uh, with a v subalmonic VSD to this entity because they behave with a similar uh, pathophysiology. Uh, so this case that we can see the pulmonary artery overrides more than 50% of, uh, uh, of the right ventricle. And we have the aorta completely coming from the uh, right ventricle. So this is a case of double outlet right ventricle. And we can appreciate that the VSD uh, 
uh, showing uh, shunting from both ventricles uh, and the LV mainly to the uh, pulmonary artery and the RV give also outflow to the pulmonary artery. Uh, this is another case of double outlet right ventricle uh, subpulmonic VSD but with other complexity. We have abnormal attachment of the mitral valve to the uh, septal crest. We can uh, say it is type A uh, straddling, it's not crossing the VSD, uh, just in the LVOT. And this another case with uh, dwarf subbalmonic VSD, and we have a large muscular VSD, so it's not only uh, uh, the diagnosis of VSD, you should look for the other abnormalities, especially when you start. Uh, we all know that most of the cases with simple TGA doesn't have associated uh, abnormalities, but when you have TGA with VSD, you start to think about other abnormalities, either other VSDs or uh, other associations. This is what uh, also usually we stress, do not forget to scan the septum. Uh, this is a case of TGA, and it has the parallel relation of the great vessels, and we can see the South cheese septum. So it's very rare to see this uh, abnormality, but it is, it is present. Uh, so you should always look at the septum, especially if you have a uh, large VDA or large VSD. Uh, so if you have uh, one of the shunts that equalize the pressure between the two ventricles, you can miss the other uh, defects in the septum. Uh, this is uh, another case of uh, uh, TGA with left outflow tract obstruction. We, they have a, it has a cleft mitral uh, isolated cleft mitral uh, and it causes some uh, LV tube structure and this also will be challenging in uh, repair. Uh, other types of the LV tube structure if you can find just uh, septal ridge like the subaortic uh, we can say it is subbalmonic membrane uh, and we can see that the valve in this case uh, looks uh, healthy uh, although there is uh, obstruction at the level of the uh, LVT. This is another example of the TGA VSD, uh, and we have a sub. Uh, uh, so we can see here that the valve leaflets is opening. We have uh, a muscular ridge uh, below the uh, the valve. Uh, also, the LV tube obstruction, outflow tract obstruction, it is commonly associated with VSD. And in rare cases, there is cases with intact ventricular septum, and it has left ventricular outflow tract obstruction but much more rare I mean, than the, the case with VSD. Uh, one also the uh, common uh, uh, mechanisms of the LVQ uh, outflow tract obstruction is the uh, posteriorly deviated conal septum. Uh, so uh, you can see that the, this muscle is completely obstructing the outflow tract. Uh, this another case of uh, subvalvular obstruction with the valve looks uh, uh, slight, I mean, uh, looks good in the mobility and the size and the uh, outflow uh, view. Uh, also, don't miss the coarctation. Uh, we have seen uh, cases uh, with coarctation during the first presentation or even later after the. Uh, the uh, the operation. Uh, and also in the case especially with a double outlet right ventricle uh, and the subalmonic VSD, uh, check for the cases with hyplastic aortic arch or interruption or complete interruption. Uh, and this can be figured uh, out by uh, another additional uh, imaging, like the CT, it's better to uh, delineate these abnormalities. Uh, also, the other findings that we can get in the case of the TGA, if you have uh, these cases, uh, especially the late presenters coming with uh, prolonged cyanosis, so they can find uh, multiple collaterals, uh, systemic to pulmonary collaterals. Uh, although we know that most of these cases post, uh, post surgery that regress spontaneously, but some cases needs to be managed uh, percutaneously after uh, surgery. Um, other rare findings, uh, what we have seen, this is a case of TGA, 
and we can see uh, AB window uh, with uh, TGE. Uh, this patient with TGE intact septum and it has uh, AB window. Uh, it's a very rare case. I, I, ha I have never seen it uh, uh, only in this case. <coughs> Also, the, uh, the other additional findings that the RV shouldn't be overlooked. I mean, uh, uh, we know that since the TGAs, we are always talking about the LV and the conditioning of the LV, and we are not, uh, I mean, forgetting the RV, and we uh, have the fact that the RV is dominant and, uh, 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 and of good size. But also, in, in some cases, we find that the RV is not uh, it's, it's not tripartite, and uh, uh, in this case also uh, it has TGA and intact septum. Uh, this case was sorry TGA and uh, and VSD, but the RV was very small. If you can look at the full chamber view, you can see the RV is, uh, the apex is heavily trabeculated, almost obliterated, and the tricuspid annulus itself is small. No, it's not tricuspid visa. You can see that this. Uh, tricuspid uh, that is high plastic in comparison to mitral, but is still uh, opening. So, uh, to conclude what we have seen, uh, in, in the echo diagnosis, you can easily detect a case of TGA. Just one view, see the parallelization of the grid vessels, the abnormal orientation of the uh, aorta from the RV and the pulmonary from the LV, you can say it is TGA. But uh, still, you have a lot of data to can you can get from the echo, uh, and it can help in the either uh, improving the outcome if you can looking for the coronaries and the abnormalities, uh, and uh, the other associations that can be missed uh, if you have other VSDs that cannot be addressed uh, during diagnosis. These things you can uh, get it by echo just uh, with a meticulous assessment. If you put like a checklist in your, uh, or, I mean go through uh, everything. So to conclude these things, the first abnormality or the main abnormality is the arterial orientation, the valve morphology. Check the coronary anatomy, check the LV, the size, the mass and function, uh, the ASD and size and direction of flow. And this can uh, uh, help to understand the pathophysiology if this patient have a good mixing or not. And uh, like we said, if you find the BDA or a VSD, large VSD, don't forget to scan the septum because you can miss uh, uh, the other uh, defects. Uh, check the outflow obstructions, which level of obstruction, and also don't forget the, uh, the extra cardiac uh, associations that, like the coarctation, the uh, other uh, collaterals, or the RV size. Uh, so, case one was uh, three months age, uh, male, uh, with vital signs, uh, weight of 3.5 kilograms, oxygen saturation 60 to 70. Uh, his heart rate is 140. From the history, he had mild cyanosis immediately after birth. NICU admission for four days with significant uh, tachypnea, shortness of breathing, and difficult feeding. Uh, by examination, there is central cyanosis. Uh, he is tachypnic, with mild tender liver, soft murmur over the upper left sternal border, well perfused with intact peripheral pulses, and not syndrome. Uh, this is a chest x ray. So from the echo, uh, what do you think the diagnosis? So from this view, we can see uh, barrel grade vessels, TGA. Uh, there is like a subbalmonic VSD, or there is a VSD here. We can check later the, the, the ventricles are of good size and the function. So. Uh, So this is a case of uh, DURP, uh, subharmonic VSD, uh, TGA and subharmonic VSD. And we checked the, uh, the pulse therapy, uh, it was fine. And the Doppler and the water is okay. So what's your decision? To do uh, this is a three months old patient. Can do primary RTS switch or VSD closure. Uh, 
we can do B bands in RTS switch in VSD closure. We can do further imaging. What do you think about this case? Are we missing something or? Uh, Three months old. Three months old. Three months old. As we mentioned, the the main uh, thing that we should we shouldn't look the other associations. Uh, if we look for this patient, we found a very large BDE, and the arch is. Uh, although the, the arch is almost interrupted, although the volatility is intact, and the, and the saturation is, uh, uh, is uh, I mean, the diagnosis is okay, but we still uh, have things that doesn't, I mean, do not rely only on the first image that you get, the diagnosis, and forget the other associations. Uh, so this patient has actually almost uh, interruption, and the aorta is, uh, seeing uh, uh, flow from the, the BDA, the arch, uh, there are, there's some pull reversal, and the, in the CT it has uh, interruption in the aortic arch. So uh, for this case, just um, focusing on you, do not forget the other uh, things uh, associated with, with the TGE. Uh, back to the management, it will be primary arterial switch, uh, arch repair, and VSD closure. So it's a, uh, it's a complex case, we know, but uh, we have seen that cases received uh, arch repair and B-band at the stage, uh, this can be, uh, I mean, can be separated for the cases with, uh, who are stacking in a, a PICUs or, uh, I mean, struggling with the, with the mechanical ventilator or something like that. And uh, also uh, this strategy also doesn't help these patients a lot. We have seen patients uh, doing the first stage and stay in the ICU for like six months. Uh, and uh, the patient who are due uh, primary arterial switch and the arch repair and VSD, although this complex, they can go home within uh, three days or a week. Uh, the second case is uh, 18 days old, uh, also male, uh, with a weight of three kilograms, a saturation of 70, heart rate 110. Uh, history, there's a deep cyanosis immediately after birth, diagnosed as simple TGE, uh, admitted in the NICU for days to receive prostaglandins followed by balloon atraceptostomy, and uh, transferred after stabilization. On examination, he has central cyanosis, harsh murmur over left sternal border, uh, well perfused, intact peripheral pulsation, no, not syndromic. Uh, so this is uh, chest X-ray. And the echo from the posternal uh, long axis view uh, confirming the diagnosis. But we have the apical septum is sous cheese. So uh, early, this uh, VSDs may be uh, overlooked because of the elevated uh, uh, pulmonary vascular resistance and pulmonary arterial pressure. Uh, and they uh, manage uh, because of the desaturation was prostaglandin and giving uh, uh, doing uh, balloon atracetostomy. Uh, he presented now at 18 days, we're having all these uh, VSDs, and the LV uh, by 2D looks uh, of good size and uh, of uh, uh, well conditioned. Uh, this is a gradient across the VSDs in, uh, in uh, around the 28, 30. This also again the VSDs and the uh, short axis view for this uh, kit. Again, uh, screening of uh, the septum and different views shows uh, multiple uh, non restricted VSDs. So we discussed this patient and we considered that these VSDs are uh, unrestricted. So why? We, we do the band now or uh, manage the patient. Uh, he has good saturation, uh, has trained ventricle. Uh, so give some time for these VSDs, whether to be smaller in size or we can assess the patient for uh, palliative repair like pulmonary artery banding at the age of two months. So we send him home and get him back at the age of two months. So this is echo uh, two months later. 
So we can see only very small jets uh, from these VSDs. And when we get the gradient across these VSDs, it became like 60. So we don't know now uh, where specifically these VSDs get smaller. If it is, if we have seen this patient at the age of 18 days, maybe start to be small at the age of uh, 20 or 25 or 30. So uh, looking uh, to this uh, view, we have seen that the posterior wall of the left ventricle become uh, less prepared uh, like the first uh, echo. So we considered uh, this patient is borderline, uh, uh, the, the LV is borderline. And we get him to the cath lab and we do a hemodynamic assessment and we find that the LV pressure is 38 uh, versus the RV is uh, 86. So it's less than 50% of the uh, ventricle. Uh, of the sort of the systemic ventricle. So what do you think? I do I do training in our So either retraining or so what's what's the the options? Uh, Either B-band, then RTS switch, plus minus VSD closure, this is a training strategy, or the two-stage strategy, or uh, do arterial switch now and VSD closure, uh, or do ver further imaging. Uh, so at that time, we considered the patient can, uh, because we have seen that this ventricle is uh, it's borderline, so we consider also uh, while uh, getting him to the cath lab to receive uh, cardiac MRI to assess the ventricular mass. We know that the mass estimated in, in the st uh, study of the pervertedness of the LV uh, was uh, getting from the M mode of the uh, echo, it's not from the MRI. Uh, so, this is the data for this patient. Uh, LV but my ventricle is dilated, not hypertrophied, preserves the stoic function. The LV mass is 19. This paradoxical set of motion. This is a comment I get it from the uh, MRI data of this patient. Uh, so uh, we con consider this patient for the first stage. So we have done uh, a B band, uh, and uh, this is the catheter data post uh, uh, first stage. So now we have uh, the LV is uh, 58, almost 60, and the RV is 96. So it's around 70% or 70 something. Vitalical option attack. I did get that. So uh, primary RTS switch, plus minus V's closure, or atrial switch. Uh, we release of plus minus release of the beep and the book should go on a high time and I'm going to give a cell go higher both options are bad versus 96 is uh, still six, 60 something it's uh, not any seven, seven Uh, I'm not sure what we considered in this case at the time, but uh, uh, do you think if we repeat the MRI, this can be give more data for this we can, case? We can very well actually wait further, uh, and the LV pressure might increase wh when the patient goes older uh, and the band gets tighter. Okay. Uh, I, I would so to continue training? Uh, I would have liked the, the, this the was six LV month pressure uh, to be a bit higher than, than 60%. And uh, so one option is the saturation is still maintained to wait further uh, and, and get uh, yani, uh, another cat up to the six month or so. Uh, if, uh, if the LV pressure does not go higher, then I, I would do a eight switch. Uh, however, if it goes higher, approaches yani 75-80% of systemic, then I would proceed for a T switch. Again, this is a very good one. 
But the important thing here is uh, if, if you have a patient with multiple BSDs, do not send him home lightly because he might very well get the BSDs closing and then start deconditioning. Yeah, this, this is, is, one, this is, uh, this yeah, is one of the important learn. lessons uh, learned lesson. in this case. If you have a patient, we know that the native, I mean the, the natural history of the muscular VSDs is different than the membranous VSDs. And uh, most of the muscular VSD either get smaller or spontaneously closed, uh, I mean, easily than the permanent VSD. So if you have a patient with multiple uh, apical muscular VSDs or multiple small mus borderline VSDs, uh, you can get him a close follow-ups uh, rather than sending him, him home and sees it's a COZ cheese septum. I will do a band when, when he uh, become older or uh, two or three months at the time of palliative repair. Uh, this is one of the lessons learned in this case and actually we applied this for many cases after this one and we get uh, a different uh, management of that. Closer so case 3 uh, uh, is a 9 month old uh, male, he was from Africa, uh, he has a weight of 7 kilograms, saturation of 60 uh, to 70, heart rate is 100, He's deeply, uh, his history is deep cyanosis Immediately after birth, he underwent balloon intraceptostomy, uh, presented to our center as a case of neglected TGA, as central cyanosis, uh, soft murmur over left sternal border, uh, well perfused and intact pulsation, not syndromic. This is his uh, x ray. Sorry for. Uh, this is his uh, subcostal views. Uh, Choose dominant uh, right ventricle, uh, dilated and hypertrophied, and giving origin to the aorta. And the LV is compressed uh, by the RV. This is a full chamber view for this uh, patient. Um, and you can see sometimes uh, you get the volume of the LV looks okay, although the ASD is large. Uh, but because of the factor of the age, this patient is nine months old. Uh, uh, and then in this borderline cases, uh, we c you can consider to go for hemodynamic catheter to check maybe there is pulmonary hypertension so it, it maintains this LV for a long time or not, or just uh, it's a volume loaded ventricle rather than uh, pressure loaded ventricle so you can find the pressure of this ventricle is uh, very low. Uh, but also uh, seeing the, poster the posterior wall of the LV in different uh, views. <coughs> this helps you to assess the thickness of the posterior wall in the diastole. And in some cases, the papillary muscles give you a false impression that the LV uh, posterior wall is still uh, hypertrophied and is still uh, prepared. Uh, this is M. Wood, so he's nine a month old patient and he has a 4.6 millimeter uh, uh, thickness of the posterior. Uh, so, first stage, uh, first uh, primary RTS switch, or second stage RTS switch, atrial switch, or different options. So I think in this patient, uh, I don't have the whole data, but we did the uh, hemodynamic caster and they find the LV is almost half systemic or less uh, the, the right ventricle so we go for uh, atrial switch uh, operation. Uh, case number four, uh, 26 month uh, old female patient, uh, weight 7 kilograms, saturation 60, heart rate is 100. Uh, she has cyanosis discovered at the age of two months and the progressive, no previous interventions. Uh, on examination, she has central cyanosis, harsh ejection, systolic member over the upper left sternal border, well perfused, intact peripheral pulsations, chest clubbing, and not syndromic. This is her chest x ray. Uh, sorry for the quality of the uh, videos. نعمل تلا كومبريشن أو حاجة في البرزنتيشن فصلت عليه. Okay. okay. In this case, from the subcostal view, you can see uh, there is a sub uh, uh, subvalvular level of obstruction of the left ventricular artery tract. 
we have seen the aorta coming from the RV and the uh, pulmonary coming from the LD. This is the, uh, the other views of this patient. So we can see there is a, uh, this obstruction, subfibular obstruction is uh, uh, div uh, markedly deviated posterior coronal septum, uh, causing FVT obstruction. This other uh, views of the LVOT uh, outflow tract. So uh, we can see that the, the valve itself is opening well, and there is no obstruction of the valve, but the subvalvular element is uh, prominent, and the uh, uh, so. This is uh, other views to check the valve mobility in the five chamber view. And this patient has like a small uh, apical muscular VSDs. That's uh, think like type C uh, coronary anatomy. So what are the options? Uh, there is Rastelli. Uh, or uh, double root transfiguration, uh, primary arterial switch, or VSD closure and LVOT relief, or uh, other options. What about <laughs> so, uh, I, I was having uh, seen that the valve is not too small. Uh, on the Z score, it's on the low normal. It's not that low, but it's on the low normal. So one option would be to inspect the valve intraoperatively and see the suburb obstruction. If we're confident that we'll be able to relieve the suburb obstruction, then we do that, close the VSD mm -hmm. and do our tear switch. Uh, however, if we think the valve is too uh, small or of poor morphology, or we think that we'll not be able to get rid of the whole elevated obstruction, then we would do one of the other options, probably rest them. In this case, we consider to resect the subvalvular element. Uh, so even we get a better uh, mobility of the uh, uh, leaflets of the valve, the pulmonary valve, the new aortic valve. Uh, and this, the resection after resection of the uh, LVT, we know that this valve is uh, uh, slightly smaller, but now after uh, filling of the LV and the good flow, uh, because also this, this ventricle, is the, most of the flow are deviated to the aorta. So uh, the filling of the left outflow tract, of, uh, and the, this valve is uh, much lower after, uh, before uh, repair. So after repair, we find that the a good, uh, and this annular size is not that small as we uh, see in the uh, preoperative images. We have like a small residual BSD on the patch, but uh, it went fine. This is the short axis view uh, of the uh, new uh, uh, aorta. So actually, it's bicuspid. If you can see the this the non facing before with the or the non and right uh, cusps now are uh, fused, uh, but the patient uh, went well. Uh, and this is the uh, images for the Lecomte. Uh, and, and the boss are doing no, no this is not the comp this is a uh, uh, right parasternal uh, or uh, suprasternal uh, view to check the LVOT with the pulmonary valve and getting uh, the highest gradient from the from uh, this yeah so the new aorta now have a gradient of 14 uh, and it went uh, fine and this is the the image for the Lecomte. So, uh, case number five. Uh, 25 days, male baby, uh, weight 3.5 kilogram, oxygen saturation 70 to 80, has mild cyanosis immediately after birth, presented to our center as a case of simple TGA. Uh, has mild central cyanosis, no normal, well perfused, intact peripheral pulsation, not uh, syndromic. This is just X-ray. Yeah, it's not typical for simple TG.
Okay. بالماني اللي هو بس ده بالماني بالفركيشن او ممكن في بي دي اي او حاجه ار بي دايليتد وكل التي جي اي بالار بي بتاعهم دايليتد اكثر من اللازم طول اسماء مش عايز تقول لي حاجه ايه لا ده انت المفروض انت الحاله دي بتاعتك مش عايز تعلق لي حاجه مش تي جي اصلا السيشن بتاعه احنا مايند ساينوتيك مش فاكر الارقام بالظبط مايند ساينوتيك مش حاجه مش اول حاجه احنا قلنا انه الايكو دايجنوز بتاع تي جي اي ده حاجه سهله جدا يعني اول سول سب كوستال يو كان جيت ذا بارل ريليشن احنا ما شفناش البارل ريليشن اصلا صحيح اه في الجريد فيسز اللي كامين فروم ذا ال دي اس برانشنج بس مش ما فيش بارس كده الحاجة الحاجة الثانية إنه في كرونري كمان كامينج بالضبط زي ما أنت بتقول فاا دكتور أسماء خلاص أعفلت منها آه بالضبط فاحنا لما مشينا مع العين هو ما عندوش هو مش ده مش تيجي أظن هو يعني في ميس ليدينج طبعا السينوزس سابو اللام كونديشن اللي كان في الإكس راي اللي إحنا شفناه انما ما فيش اصلا الباراليشن في ولا فيو ولا في السب كوستل ولا في الفور تشامبر يعني ما فيش اي فيو احنا قدرنا نشوف فيه تو بارال جريد فيسز فدي اظن هي حاجه سهله وبت ايزلي تجيت دايجنوز بس برضه كان بي ميزد بسبب الكلينيكال سيناريو اللي حوالين العين في اللونج اكسس برضه في التشست ويندو ما شفناش موضوع الباريال سيركيليشن الحاجه الثانيه انه الكورونريز برضه كامينج فروم ذا بوستير جريد فيسز لا خلاص بقى احنا مش هن مش هنحط الاوبشنز بتاعت نعمل له ار تي اس سويتش والكلام ده عشان هو وصل لاوضه العمليات عشان يعمل ار تي اس سويتش كمان تبقى دي مشكله طيب ذيس بيشنت وين وي تشيك زي ما قلنا لما برضو مش بس انك تشوف الكرونيز شوف الفلو بتاعهم هل هم فعلا جايين من هنا ولا عشان احنا كتير برضو بنشوف الكرونيز كانهم طالعين من النورما اظن هو تي جي اي فالكرونيز دي وان ثينج انما الحاجه الثانيه ان احنا لما طلعنا الباراستيرنال شورت اكسس فيو شويه لقينا انه الاورطه اه بيدي فعلا بيدي فيسل مش مش نورمال والبرمونري بيدي ذا اذر فيسل فدي كيس اوف يعني واتس كولد هيمي ترانكس او uh, التسميه الجديده بتاعها انوماليس اوريجن اوف رايت بالمونري ارتري فروم ذا اورطه وذس كان ايزلي ديتكتد باي ذا ايمالس لاي سي السيناريو ده سيناريو حقيقي يعني ذس بيشنت was a patient presented to us on art center with diagnosis ده وكان جاي عشان يعمل تي جي اي ولقينا كده وقعد فتره كلينيكالي قبل ما يدخل العمليه طيب كيس نمبر 6 12 years uh, old male child set weight 26 saturation 30 40 بكبر بالايج وانز بالساتوريشن heart rate is 130 this patient has sinus since birth progressively worsening presented to our center as a case of TGA, severe pulmonary hypertension, and severe sinus congestive heart failure symptoms. Uh, severe central sinusis, no murmur, except with second sound, uh, not well perfused with intact pulsation, and not syndromic. This is her chest X-ray. So we have large ESD. We have impaired function on, on both. Uh, ventricles, mostly on the left side. Uh, this is the pulmonary coming from the LV with moderate regurgitation at least. Uh, the mean pulmonary pressure is 50 plus. We have mild pericardial effusion and we invert biventricular function. 
the function was the ejection function from the mode was 30. This is his cardiac MRI. Uh, so, what's your decision? Astana. If it's easy. Kid Vince could divide it so easy. So, this is one of the difficult cases that we uh, faced. Uh, and after uh, a lot of discussions, we excluded the myocarditis or the uh, affected myocardium. Uh, from the MRI. So uh, uh, we consider at least uh, to do a high risk uh, palliative. It's not palliative, I mean, again, uh, yeah, uh, high risk atrial uh, switch, uh, the modified master. And uh, fortunately, this patient get out with uh, full saturation, and we left a small ASD. Uh, it gets out from the operation with uh, high 90 saturation. The function improved slightly. It's not totally improved, but the, now the ejection fraction in the follow-ups of this patient, I think, 45 uh, ejection fraction instead of 30, and uh, it has a, a much much more improvement in the quality of life. Uh, some cases, the the progressive uh, pulmonary vascular uh, disease of the case of TG, even without a large intracardiac shunt, I mean, without large VSD or large BDA can uh, alone affect uh, this uh, uh, case. And uh, I think uh, a lot of people are talking about the uh, causes of the uh, progressive pulmonary hypertension in case of TGA, even without uh, shunts, including the rapid pulmonary circulation, the, uh, the high oxygen, uh, uh, highly oxygenated blood going to the lung, which uh, cause some uh, toxicity. Uh, uh, this is uh, so, uh, also, in cases with TGVSD, we prefer to use surgery early, uh, early than the cases with uh, normally rated vessels with a VSD. Uh, thank you.